In this video, we're going to talk about a neat little trick you can do for determining R and S configurations. And this is going to be helpful when we learn how to draw the enantiomers of different stereo centers. It's called the single swap rule. And it comes in really handy. So let's have a look at this molecule here that I've drawn. Note that we've got the central carbon, which I actually didn't draw. And we've got four different groups attached to this central carbon. We've got chlorine, hydrogen, CH3, and bromine. So this is a chiral center here. And we need to be able to determine whether this chiral center is R or S. If you remember how we do that, we, we look at the atoms directly attached to the chiral center, and then we're going to um, evaluate which of these has the highest atomic number. So for the ones we're dealing with here, bromine is 35, chlorine is 17, carbon is 6, and hydrogen, of course, is going to be 1. So that allows us fairly easily to rank the different priorities here. So bromine, bromine, chlorine, carbon is three, hydrogen is four. And if you remember R and S, so if it goes, so if we put number four in the back and then we trace a line from one to two to three, if it's clockwise, it gives us R. And if it's counterclockwise, it's gonna be S. So in this case, we're going from bromine to chlorine to carbon, so one to two to three. So we can draw that over here. We're going this way. This is clockwise. So therefore, this is R. Okay, so far so good. It's a pretty straightforward determination of RRS. So what I'm gonna show you here is what happens when we switch or swap or invert any two groups on a stereo center. Just see how many examples we can get to. We don't have to do all of them, but um, there's six different ways we could, there's four different groups, there's actually six different ways we could swap two groups. So let's start with the easiest one. Let's swap chlorine and H. Now, this is not a chemical reaction. We're just, this is sort of, um, we're doing this on paper. So imagine that if we were just to switch two bonds here to flip or invert two bonds, what would happen to R and S? So let's say that we were going to make our H a wedge and we're going to make our chlorine a dash. What would that do to our R or S? So we've got one, two, three, and four. And now when we trace a line from one, two, and three, it still goes clockwise as it did before, but remember, that number four has to be in the back. And here, number four is in the front. So if you saw the previous video about a simple little trick we can do when the fourth ranked substituent is in the front, what we can do is flip. So if it originally goes clockwise, because number four is in the front, we just basically do the reverse, okay? So it's instead of going it's the reverse of whatever it would normally have been. So instead of clockwise, it's going to be counterclockwise, which is going to mean that this is actually S. And it's actually the equivalent of just imagining that you're looking at it instead of looking at it from the front, you're looking at it from the back. It's going to, it's going to look in the opposite direction. Okay, so this is S. And so we notice that if we flip chlorine and hydrogen, we, it goes from, so it didn't flip just we flipped which was a dash and which was a wedge, right? So this is now S, where it was R before. Okay, let's swap, uh, let's say, two atoms at random, or two groups at random, chlorine and CH3. Okay, so let's see what that would look like. So we've got bromine, and then we've got, this would put the chlorine here, and now our, CH3 would be a wedge, CH3. Our H would still be a dash. And our chlorine would be now in the plane of the page. And let's have a look here what happened to our, our RS. So one, two, three, and four. Notice now that when we go from one to two to three, we're going counterclockwise, right? going counterclockwise so this is now s so we we swapped cl and ch3 okay let's see what happens when we swap 
uh, we've already swapped chlorine and let's swap chlorine and bromine so chlorine and bromine so that would give us what well we'd have chlorine and then we'd have CH3 we would have an H back here and then we'd have in the front we'd have our bromine and so what would this be this would be one two three again we're going to be going counterclockwise so this is s and uh that's three out of six possibilities let's do one more on this page and then then uh let's see so let's swip swap uh bromine swip that's not a word bromine and ch3 what happens when we do that so we get CH3 and the H remains in the back the CL remains in the front and our bromine is here so this would give us one two three and hydrogen is four so we'd again go this direction so that would again be counterclockwise so in other words S so we've done four examples here Note that anytime we're swapping these two groups, it's going from R to S. So uh, we'll do two more, the other two examples. They're going to be a little bit trickier because we're actually going to put hydrogen in the plane of the page. So there's two swaps we haven't done yet. So we're going to do those two swaps and show you what to do if hydrogen is not in the front or in the back, if it's on the side. This is a little bit trickier. So let's swap H and CH3. Okay, so what would this do? This would put bromine over here, and this would put hydrogen here. We've got CH3 in the back, and we've got CL in the front. Now, what do we do here? Because this is one, two, and three, and here's number four. Now, notice how our hydrogen is not in the front or in the back. So how do we figure out R and S when hydrogen is actually, it's in the plane? In the plane. Okay, so there's two ways to do it. Now, if you've got very good spatial skills, what you can do is you can kind of imagine looking along this bond here. And, and if you were to look at this bond from along this, uh, this atom from this direction, you can imagine that it would look something like this. You'd, you'd have... Um, the chlorine would be at your uh, roughly uh, three o'clock. So the chlorine would be here, your bromine would be here, your CH3 would be here, and this is your carbon, and the hydrogen would be hidden. So it would be one, two, and three. So it would be going this direction. It would be S, oh, sorry, counterclockwise, which is gonna be S. Now that's if you can imagine looking along this bond. That's one way to do it. And if you get good at, at, if you make a model of this, you'll see that immediately. Or if you practice this by yourself, you'll see this. You get better at, at your spatial skills, you'll, you'll be able to do this. But there's a different way to do it, which you might also find useful. And this is just doing what we call a bond rotation. So if we do a bond rotation, what we're going to do is we're basically going to interconvert any three groups any three groups. So what we can do is take CH3, H, and BR. I just picked these at random, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna put H in the back. That's what we're really trying to do here. We're gonna put H in the back, just to make it a little bit easier to figure out R or S. So we're gonna keep chlorine the same. It's gonna stay a wedge, but everything else is gonna change. So our bromine is going to go from being in the plane on the left to being the plane on the right. Our hydrogen is going to go from being in the plane down to where the CH3 is. So our hydrogen is going to become a dash. And our CH3 is going to become, going to go where our BR is. So it's going to become in the plane of the page. So that's going to give us this. And if we figure out R and S now, it's a little easier, right? Because four is in the back. So this would give us one, two, and three. So this would be counterclockwise. In other words, this would be S. 
So there's two ways to do it. We can do it through kind of eyeing it, or you can do it through the bond rotation. But either way, notice that it's gone from R, where we started, to S. So the same rule applies. And we can actually do the same thing with this last example. So if we were to swap hydrogen and bromine. So that would put bromine in the back. We'd have CH3, uh, chlorine would be a wedge here, and then hydrogen would be here. Again, we can, uh, we could, we could do again, just looking at it from, from one angle. If you looked at it the right way, you would see that, that this molecule again was going to be S. But let's just do the bond rotation. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit faster for us. So we'll take hydrogen and put it where the CH3 is, CH3 where the bromine is, and Br where the H is, and that's going to give us Cl remains a wedge, and then our CH3 is going where the Br is, so it's going to go in the back. H is going where the CH3 is, so it's here. Actually, you know what? That's not going to be very good, is it? So let's actually put hydrogen. We want to put hydrogen actually in the back. We don't want to put hydrogen on the side. That wouldn't be as good. So let's do it the opposite direction. So let's take hydrogen, put it in the back, bromine in the plane, and CH3 also in the plane of the page. So then we have hydrogen here, and this is going to be bromine, and this is going to be CH3. And then if you now we do our priorities, so one, two, and three. So this would now be tracing this direction. So be counterclockwise again, so it's gonna be S. So the bottom line in for this video is, is essentially that on any stereo center, swap, if you swap any two groups you will change R to S or vice versa and that's the single swap rule and it'll be coming really handy when you have to draw the enantiomer of a given molecule because really all you're gonna have to do is swap any two groups it doesn't matter which like we said we showed you could draw we could flip any of the six possibilities and they each in our, our R stereocenter they turn our R stereocenter into an S stereocenter so good thing to know